Praise be to God. We praise Him. We seek His guidance and forgiveness. Whomever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whoever is left without guidance, none can guide besides Allah. We bear witness that there is no one worth worshipping but Allah. And we bear witness that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger. Prayers and peace of Allah be upon him, upon his companions, upon his followers and their followers till the day of judgment. Ameen. Worshippers of Allah have the taqwa of Allah. That is, have the balance between the love of Allah, the respect of his commands, and the fear of the consequences of your actions on the day of judgment. Have the taqwa of Allah and do not die except on the state of Islam, the state of submission to the will and the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran very clearly, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu idha nudiya lis salati min yawmi al-jumu'ati fas'aw ila dhikri Allahi wadharu al-bayt. Allah said what could be translated as, O believers, when the call for prayer, for Jum'ah prayer, is announced, is called, abandon everything, drop everything, leave business, leave sales, leave everything, and rush to the masjid, rush to listen to khutbat al-Jum'ah. Now, some people are not paying attention to this command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So either they don't come to Jum'ah, or when they come, they come late. They're slow to come. And I always ask myself, why? I'm not talking about the, those who are stuck or forced or have no control over their schedule. I'm talking people who are not given extra effort to be here at the beginning of Salatul Jum'ah. And while all the excuses are not okay, but some of them are understandable. And one of those reasoning is that some people say, I do not see any benefit of attending Jum'ah prayer. I do not see myself getting back uplifted or feel good when I go to Jum'ah, either because the khutbah is so boring or the khutbah topic is repetitive or it's not relevant or it's not bringing anything new to my life. So when I go back to my work, when I go back to my house, I don't feel positive anymore. Well, that is again understandable, yet we still have to come early to Salat al-Jum'ah. But back to the reasoning that was given. It is extremely important that the khutbah is beneficial. It brings knowledge, a good reminder, or an even new information that people did not learn before. They get to be educated about or reminded about something that learned in the past. It should be uplifting and positive and encouraging. It is sad to see that some, some, some khutbahs leave people go and they're depressed or make, they make them feel bad about themselves. But more importantly, it has to be very relevant. What does that mean? It has to be relevant to the people who are attending. It has to make sense whom you're talking to. A khutbah in Southern California is different than a khutbah in Yemen or in Egypt or in Pakistan. It has to understand who are the people who are listening. I use the proper language, the proper terminology, and the proper way of communicating the talk. But also, it has to be timely, man. It has to be timely, relevant. We have to see what's happening around us in the society, what's happening around us in the community, what's happening around us in the whole world, that we have to make sure that the khutbahs are relevant when it comes to that. Thankfully, alhamdulillah, for the past decade or two, there was a tremendous improvement in the khutbahs in at least Southern California, I'm talking. The great khatibs that you see invited here, the great young scholars who are able to connect with the youth, the language that is used that's very relevant, that's alhamdulillah been noticed and been seen that a lot of khutbahs are becoming more beneficial and more relevant. In addition to that, the high usage of technology and social media to use those talks to be spread out had made Islamic knowledge and relevant Islamic knowledge, alhamdulillah, more popular. And here in this masjid, we try our best to get the best khatibs in, in, the, in the country. We try our best to use the best technology to give and promote that image as much as we can. If any of you like to participate in that uh, technology or uh, spreading the, the, the message out, please reach out to me or to the masjid and see how you can help. One of the things that I personally give hard time to the committee who does the uh, khutbah preparation is they always ask me a few days earlier about the title of my khutbah. And my answer is always, I did not decide yet. 
because I don't get to, to decide about the topic of the khutbah until maybe this morning or the night before based on what's happening around us in the world and in the local society. So what I like to share today with you, a, a verse in the Quran that I find it very important and very beneficial and very timely for things that are happening around us in the world, for things that are happening around us that are so important to us as a Muslim community and a Muslim ummah. There are verses in the Quran that come in the form of a command, amr. Some of them, the command is simply a recommendation. Like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا Allah has the beautiful name, so make dua with using that name. Now, this is not a command. If someone makes dua without the names of Allah, he's not committing a sin. It's a recommendation. Some commands, verses in the Quran, they come as a motivation. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ Rush and work hard and hasten to get to Jannah. But there are many of the verses of command in the Quran are fard. We should not take it lightly. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do this, I don't have the option of saying, I disagree. I don't have the privilege of saying, I don't feel like it. These are words of commands that we have to take it seriously and consider it a must that we have to apply it in our lives. And this verse that I'm talking about today is one of those that are very strong in the command and something we all should do. We don't have the choice of saying, I don't feel like doing it. I don't want to do it. Which verse is this? This verse is in Surah Al-Imran, verse number 103. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُ The literal word translation is, hold together the rope of Allah. What does that mean? It's a word or a meaning that means be united. Stay united as a community. Stay united as an ummah. Stay united as Muslims. Do not allow division to take place between you. Do not allow division to cause problems between you because that division is going to affect you in a negative way as a community, as, a, as an ummah. This verse has a beautiful meaning in it and a beautiful set of words in it. All of it is encouraging us, telling us that it is my obligation as a Muslim to stay united with my Muslim community, with my Muslim ummah, to stay together and do not allow any division to cause problems between us. This concept or this principle of unity is the only and the first and most important step that will bring back success, strength, and respect to our ummah in the world. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always talks about a Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in many hadith. He told us how important it is to be united and stay united. Don't we all hate it when people make fun of us? Don't we all hate it when politicians say bad things about us? Don't we all hate it when a news media or a channel say negative things about our faith? Don't we all hate it when criminals and aggressors are killing our brothers and sisters? We all hate that. So, but we all want to fix it. And the most important and first step to fix this is that we have to be united all the time. Nobody respects divided communities. Nobody gives care for divided ummah or divided nations. And our enemies, they try their best and they're putting so much resources, money and human resources into keeping us divided worldwide. There are departments, their job is to create fitna and create division within the Muslims around the world. There are fake social media accounts with Muslim names and writing things just so they can create fitna and create problems between the Muslims around the world. And that serious crime of, of causing division, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, you have the right to fight those who are trying to divide you as a community. What it means to be united, to be to work together, to stick together, to be together, to feel with each other. And when we have differences, when we have divisions, when we have disagreements or disputes between us, we do not allow that to make us sell our brothers and sisters. 
We do not allow that division or that dis mis disagreement or misunderstanding or even fights between ourselves to make our enemy get into between us and cause problems. If I have a disagreement with my brother, I don't laugh or I don't get happy when something bad happens to him. That's against the concept of unity. And division, my dear brothers and sisters, have a very heavy price on our ummah. First, we, nobody will respect us. All of us will be weak. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a very important hadith, Tushifu an tatada'a alaykum al-umam kama tatada'a al-akalatu ila qas'atiha. The nations, your enemies will be around you, jumping, eating from you, just like a group of men get together around a big tray of food and eating from it. The companion said, Aw min qillatin ya Rasulullah. Because, are we because we're little in numbers? He said, no. You are actually a lot. But you are so weak, like the foam on top of the water. That weakness becomes or comes as a result of division and the lack of unity. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The wolf will eat the sheep that's far away from the cattle. What does that mean? The shaitan will jump on you when we're far away from the community. When we're not united, it will be easier for the shaitan to make us go in the wrong path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly said in the Quran, Allah Obey Allah and his messenger and do not allow division to take place between you. Otherwise, you will fail and your strength will go away. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of us understand this important command of unity within our masajid, within our local communities, and within our global ummah. Ameen. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على رسوله أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى تابعيهم ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين We're talking in this khutbah about verse number 103 in Surah Ali Imran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a clear and strong command when he said واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا Stay united and do not be divided a clear command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have to pay attention to it and we have to try to practice it again on the local level as a masjid. This masjid, we try our best to be united as a community. The SoCal community, all united under the umbrella of the Shura Council, the Muslims in the United States to be united, the Muslim Ummah at large, we need to try our best to be united as much as we can. Unfortunately, in the past several years and decades, there was a lot of wars and a lot of killings and a lot of bad things that took place. But sadly, we've seen some negative phenomena that some Muslims will have joy when other Muslims die, simply because they have a disagreement with their government or with their party. We saw that in Iraq many years ago, when Iraqis were killed and some Iraqis were happy because those Iraqi belong to a different group. We saw that in Palestine, when some Palestinians were killed and other Palestinians were okay because these belong to a different political party. And now we're seeing it, unfortunately, in Lebanon because some people are not okay, and rightfully so, with what some people did to their brothers and sisters in Syria. Now they are not, they are not, they're, they're not caring about their brothers in Lebanon that are being killed. This is not acceptable. This should not be the case whatsoever. Our innocent brothers and sisters around the world, if they are getting harmed, we should not feel joy for them. We should not be okay with that. We should be angry and sad when my innocent brothers and sisters are being killed around the world. And I will never cheer to the enemies of the Ummah or say, good job for them. You know, there was a big civil war in the history of Islam between two 
groups and two armies. The king of Byzantia thought he can use that to create even more division. So he sent a letter to the leader of one of the groups and he said, if you want me to, I can send you an army to help you against your opponent. He sent him a letter and he said, that's none of your business. Two brothers having a dispute. If you don't shut up and stay in your place, I'm going to send you an army and bring your head to me. That's how Muslims should deal with each other. Even if I disagree with you, I'm not going to be okay when something bad happens to you. This is the, against the concept of unity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in a very scary verse. Allah says, لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله You will never see people who believe in Allah and His Prophet and the Day of Judgment that they will ally themselves with those who are fighting their faith, with those who are fighting their own brothers and sisters. Even on social media, even with comments, even with our own feelings, we should not allow that to happen between us. Yes, this could be misunderstood in a way or another, but the message in today's khutbah that unity is a must within our communities. And we should not allow the shaitan or our enemies to come in between us and cause any division or any disunity between us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with other brothers and sisters around the world. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save those who are oppressed and protect those who are being harmed. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our enemies will be destroyed. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the aggressors will be prevented from causing harm and corruption around the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we see a day that our ummah is united and we see a day that we are bringing peace and prosperity not only to the Muslims but to all the people around the world.